Hey guys, it's Aiden, and this is going to be a multi-part series on how to do bruises and scar wax wounds. So today we're going to be doing bruises. Let's get the tutorial started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is clean the area that will be applying the makeup. I suggest using some sort of astringent or 99% alcohol. I'm using witch hazel here on a cotton pad just to wipe away all the dirt and grime that may have accumulated on the skin throughout the day. And this will create a nice contact surface for the makeup. Sometimes if there's oils on the skin, the makeup won't want to stick. So we just want to clear that away uh, before we get started. One thing I'll talk a lot about during these tutorials is the use of reference pictures. They're incredibly important to make sure your look is accurate. Um, especially in the film industry, you want to make sure things look realistic. So I've selected a few reference pictures for this project. This tutorial is going to kind of be a two-parter. Um, in the second part, I'm going to be using alcohol activated paints. This is Skin Illustrator. But for the purposes of this part, I'm going to be using a bruise wheel. I believe this is Maron brand, and as you can see, I've used it quite a bit throughout the years. And that's primarily what we're going to be using. It has all the colors that we're going to need. And to apply it, I'm going to be using a stipple sponge. This is a very porous sponge. It has a lot of good detail and texture on it. And that'll allow us to create a lot of irregular patterns on the skin, which is exactly what we want in a bruise. So looking at the reference pictures, I see that there's a good base of yellow and yellowish green. So we're going to go for those colors first. So just applying a little bit onto the stipple sponge. We're going to apply it to the area that we want the wound to be. This is all about layering and building up color. Now I'm going in with the green. And now I'm going to take a regular makeup sponge and I'm going to use that to kind of buffer the colors together and smooth them out. All right, next I'm going to be taking this purple color, which is quite literally the bruise color. You know, all bruises have different looks to them. They have different layers depending on the, I guess, the force of the thing that caused the bruise. And then lastly, for this effect, we're going to be using a dark purple. And that'll be kind of what I was seeing in reference pictures. There was, there was a very deep bruising. And this just is very selective, as you can see. So I'm going to apply it just into a few areas here. And again, buffering it out. And do some last minute touches on this. And you know, it's all about saying, this look looks complete, it's done, and also making sure it's uh, realistic to the circumstances, especially in filmmaking, for what uh, the scene requires, what, what kind of things have happened in the story. So that's a lot of stuff to consider. And at some point you just have to say, that's done, that's complete. So now we're gonna move on to using Skin Illustrator to create a bruise. I'm gonna put this next part sort of in double time, just because some of the things we'll be doing are pretty similar to using the bruise wheel. Except now we're going to be using alcohol activated paints. This is Skin Illustrator. It's a product that I've used for a while now. I only have two of their palettes, their starter palettes. I'm going to be using a special brush that has little stipple ends on it. And I'm just dipping it in the alcohol. This is 99% alcohol, and I'm going to begin to build up the layers of color like we did with the bruise palette. So again, I'm starting with the yellow. Um, I'm going to mix it with a little bit of the green. And the great thing about Skin Illustrator is that it kind of goes on as a wash depending on how much alcohol you use. So you can really spend time building up layers and getting the desired effect that you want. And again, you can use this sponge to buffer the alcohol activated paints to allow them to blend in a little better. Next, I'm going to move on to the bruise purple color, and I'm just gonna start building that up in layers to get it to the right intensity that I want.
And lastly, to complete the look, I'm going to pull out the bruise palette and use that deep purple color in selective places. I'm doing this because the color is a little more intense and it's always great to mix your mediums with any kind of art to create a more natural blend and realistic look. And with a couple weird hand twists, the look is done. That wraps up part one of the Bruise and Scar Wax series. Stay tuned for part two where I show you how to do scar wax wounds. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know. Thank you for watching.